and we are good. Uh, so hello everyone, my name's Gio, and I'm here with voice actress Julie M Lemieux. Miss Lemieux, how are you this evening? I'm great, how are you doing? I'm, I'm good, I'm good, just only... I'm, besides this weather, I'm doing good. <laughs> we have no control over that. Exactly. <laughs> just have to roll with the punches, I guess. Pretty much. So, um, my first question for you is, um, you're, you're mostly known for your voice acting roles in uh, multiple television productions, but before voice acting, what, what, what did you do? Well, I, I pretty much spent my, uh, right out of high school, studying theater. So, um, you know, I got my bachelor's and my master's in theater, and I thought I was going to be... Um, a theater actress, and um, but many people told me I should uh, try animation because I did uh, a lot of goofy voices, and I don't. I mean, funny. I don't even have a recollection of that, but I remember I, I've met some people who pointed that out to me. So I, um, it took a few years actually because I couldn't. I couldn't break in. I couldn't get an audition, um, and then um, I took a class, and that uh, with a uh, voice director who brought me in for an audition. So that, you know, and so basically before that I was, um, doing film and, uh, television and, uh, um, and, uh, theater and, uh, and, uh, also worked as a, as a temp to support myself, um, until it became, until voice sort of took off for me. Interesting. That's it's very interesting to hear. Uh, what what was your f getting into voice acting? What was your f first role? My first role was Chang in Tintin, and then quickly followed by Rupert Fair. Oh, so how was it like working on these productions? Well, those are both iconic shows, as you can imagine. Um, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with them, but you know. Oh yes, I've watched them. Okay, so these were like really iconic shows, um, and uh, I was less familiar with Rupert, though I had read uh, some of the Rupert annuals, but uh, Tintin for me was, I read all of those books when I was a kid, uh, so that was an amazing um, uh, gift to get that part, um, and, um, and Rupert. Uh, it was just such a beautiful show, and I uh, really uh, learned so much doing it, but also got to work with, we worked um, ensemble, so all the time, every every single session, I was in studio with um, with other members of the cast, so it was a great way for me to uh, really learn a lot in my first gig, um, and I, I loved every minute of it. It still remains for me, such a beautiful show, uh, beautifully done, beautifully animated, music sensational, and I think the performances are amazing. Well, that's very good to hear. I actually rem ha remember watching Rupert and I, as a kid, and I really enjoy it. I still do, actually, but it's it's an amazing show, to say the least. It is, it is. Uh, Novan did an amazing job with it. Very true to the, to the actual um, uh, stories from the Daily Express. Right. Yeah, I agree. They did a really good job. It's very authentic. Now, uh, my next question is, is when you do receive a voice acting role, how do you find you prepare for the, the role? You mean like, uh, so when I get the gig? Yes. Well, for me, always everything begins and ends with the script. Um, because, you know, writers have spent a long time uh, working on these scripts some other time you get the record draft they've often you know gone through five or six different uh versions and who knows how many so uh everything for me begins and ends there all my clues uh um are in that script so i first and foremost pour over the script and uh make some notes and depending on the show if, uh, if it's a show where i feel that um I have an idea for an ad lib, that, uh, and and it's the type of show where that's allowed. Um, then I will <clears throat> write some notes for myself, some um, 
little suggestions. Um, but always in every single show, the ad libs are the sounds, and the, you know, if you're falling or uh, laughing or, or whatever that may be, that isn't the dialogue. Um, so I, I usually, at the margins, write a lot of notes for myself, um, ideas, and um, and here's my dog. So having said that, and then it, depending on the role, uh, you know, if it, if it's difficult for me, if it's a part that I, um, let's say if it, it, it's a part that was based on an existing character, if it, you know, the, if I was modeling it after someone else, then I will, um, I'm running away from my dog. That's the sound you're hearing. Um, I will, you know, go back to that source material, just, uh, I'll have some clips that I sort of have, you know, lined up and just review those just to, to get that back in my head. And, um, you know, just really um, anchor the voice in my body, in a sense. For me, it's always um, a very, it's hard to describe, but each part sort of resonates in a certain part, in a certain way in my body. And so just work uh, while reading the script to, to find that again and make sure that I'm, um, I'm, I'm uh, hitting my mark. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. So from, from your voice acting roles, do you have a favorite role? Do you have a role that you really, really appreciate one that you really felt that you've had a lot of fun doing or. Well, I'm as hard. I, uh, well, I mean, I have a fondness for Rupert, for sure, it being my first uh, uh, major recurring role. Um, uh, but in terms of fun, I've had so many fun roles. Um, um, so hard to pick one, but I you know the, the grandmother from Nunchucks. Um, there's a really weird, uh, uh, not weird, a really fun show, I should say. I had a weird part on it that uh, that only lasted one season called Birds, and it was a phenomenal show. And I played Sleepy the Bat, and I um, I loved that show. But it only lasted one season. It was on CBS. Um, for some reason, I just loved that part. Um, I love a lot of the parts that I loved are animals. Strangely, you know, Rupert Bear, Sleepy the Bat, uh, Batty, another bat on uh, Almost Naked Animals. Um, and you'll notice they're all male. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, except for the grandmother, and I, I, I don't know. I love doing a range of things. I've always loved um, doing. Uh, Young ma- younger male voices, uh, really fun for me. I started my career doing a lot of that. And uh, and I also love playing uh, older female characters. Um, uh, I don't know. I It's hard, though, to pick one that stands out as my favorite. I, I uh, love so many of them. Uh, because, yeah, what you were mentioning about the male characters, you actually... You've actually fooled me when I was a kid. I was watching a lot of the shows, like, for example, um, one that you did voice work on was Monster by Mistake, and you voiced a character called Warren. And you, you, you can't tell, like, you can't tell that that's a that that from first listening to the voice, you can't tell that that's a woman doing the voice. It, it's quite amazing, actually. Like, it was a shock to me. I was reading the information then. I just wow! I remember I was as like finding this out. It was like crazy. It's um, yeah, it's fun, and you know, it's not one of those things that, to be honest, I it's not like I went to school and learned how to do that. It's just a crazy gift that you're given in this beautiful world, um, or you're not. But but I just happen to be able to. I also grew up with two brothers, so. There's my research, uh, <laughs> um, but but I yeah I just have an affinity um, for it and and I love it because it's so different than me right so uh, there's something really amazing about stretching yourself to be able to um, play characters that are so far removed from yourself. Yes, that's that's true. Um, do you have in your voice acting? 
career do you have a favorite moment like when you were recording is there just like maybe a certain thing that you remember the most or just like a memory that you've really held on to from recording or my my favorite moments and so many shows are always um i've always been ensemble uh moments where we get to record together um only because uh there's you know nothing can compare to the immediacy of actually knowing and hearing what you're responding to and responding to it in in real time um and uh often you know uh making each other corpse um (laughs) those are the best i've had so many moments where uh just so much fun in that room uh, with, with so many, uh, different actors and, uh, it just elevates your work, you know, and, and even some of my best moments have been working with kids, like being the adult in the room with, uh, with younger performers and, uh, and them treating me like I'm the same age because I'm playing a kid, <laughs> treating me like I am not an adult. And to me, that's, um, that's the greatest compliment I could ever get, really. Um, and just having a sense of fun with them as well. So there's just so many moments like that where you, uh, you know, there's, it's just a lot more fun when you're working with, with other people. That's very, that's, that is very interesting. That, that's crazy to hear. Well, it's amazing to hear for uh, lack of a better word, but yeah, it's just, do you, um, in your voice, when you do voices for a TV show, most of the time, do you find that you prefer to almost do a role? Because uh, I know for certain shows that they have, like, uh, sometimes an actor records their lines individually, and sometimes they do it in a group setting. Do you find that you prefer to do it in a group setting with people to, like, rehearse your lines with? I do, yeah. Um, and maybe that's because, you know, I... I trained as a theater actress, and so there's, uh, you know, <laughs> it, you won't, you wouldn't be doing theater unless you're doing a one man or one woman show on your own. So I, I, I just love the camaraderie and also the, uh, you know, actually working with others and being inspired by their work, uh, and just again the the sense of fun in the room, um, and and being able to play off one another. So if you get to do two different passes, um, you know, you can do two different sets of things so that, and, and each time what they do will affect your performance and vice versa. And that's what I love about it. Um, my hands are down. I mean, it takes a lot less time, um, to record on your own. Um, but I still would much rather any day be in the room with other people. Just, uh, it's, it, it, it's just it it makes the work i think anyway that much richer yeah it's kind of like i i i get what you mean it's like having someone to sort of talk to because if you're if you're doing it alone in a way it's kind of like it and you're if your character's having a conversation it's kind of like it's bouncing off of nothing right and you have to get the thing is when you audition and uh almost unless you get into a callback situation and even those are fairly rare, um, you all of your auditions are on your own. So you have to get really, really good at doing that or you, it, it, you'll never book a gig. Right. So, and, and it really teaches you to fill that world as though, uh, because all they're hearing are your lines on their own with nothing, uh, nothing um none of the other lines in between so you imagine you have to fill that world and make it so rich otherwise the auditions would have all sound quite boring and um almost monosyllabic so it really it really makes your your imagination and your brain work to not have someone else there uh to be sure but it's um it's not that it's easier it's just a lot more fun because sometimes the spontaneity of the moment will uh, what someone brings to the table will bring, you know, will see you bring up something that you didn't even imagine would have come out of you. That's that's the beauty of it. I think there's a lot of gold to be found when you work uh, ensemble. Right. So, um, 
another question I had, and this kind of, I guess it leads a bit off the last one. For someone who wanted, who wants to get involved in voice acting or being a voice actor or actress, what would you recommend? So the number one thing, of course, is, uh, I mean, the biggest thing about, and I'll, t- I'll speak to animation since that's what we're talking about here. Um, often the biggest misconception about animation is it's just about a funny voice or, or a voice, a big booming voice, or, but it's so much more than that. It's, it's about a great performance. And um, so uh, number one, if you've never taken an acting class, I'd highly recommend taking an acting or an improv class, some kind of performance class um, to familiarize yourself. But acting is also always a good one because it teaches you about beats and how to break down a script and how to look at a script. And I know that might sound, um, I think, well, it's a bit heady for animation. But the more you do that work, you know, and I was talking about earlier, the homework I do at home uh, with my script, the more... Uh, you can bring what I call peaks and valleys into the performance um, and, and give it so much life and make it rich. If you know who you're talking to, what, you know, what, what, what's being, it's like any, any film or television, what's being said, what's not being said. How do you feel about the person you're talking to? And so those are it's so much more than a voice, right? That, those are acting skills. Um, so number one, that number two is something I did um, when I was young a lot. I read aloud. I was not uh, very popular in my family. <laughs> <laughs> my brothers did, but I would go into my room and do it. But I, instead of just reading, I uh, I loved reading books aloud, and of course, doing all the voices, uh, not knowing that that would leave me here, but uh, but reading aloud, since that is what you'll be doing, is, is a very different thing than reading in your head. And, um, and by doing it, A, you get familiar with your own voice and the, and the, um, um, the, your range. And, and by adding characterizations to the, the characters in the book, you, you can develop um, a range of, uh, I like to call it, a catalog of, of characters that you can call upon. Um, that's second. And of course, if whatever the medium is that you're interested in, right? If you want to be a writer, you read books. If you, you want to be an animation performer, then yes, you should watch animation. (laughs) Um, right. It's, it's, uh, if you want to, you know, create comic books, then you should read them. Um, so that you, you see it, what works, what doesn't, what, what do you think? Because not all of it necessarily always works, or um, you may not, it may not be to your taste, but at least you develop your taste and think, I love that. I love how that hits. Is it against type? Is it uh, stereotypical? And, you know, it, it runs the gamut, really. Some roles you'll know this are, are cast against type, and some are very, very much uh, stereotypically cast. So um, that's hugely important. That's homework. But I also, I think, you know, getting to know your own voice, getting, you have to be one heck of a good reader. You have to be really good at cold reads. Um, And, um, you know, the way to do that is to love reading. Um, I think that's the number one thing, whatever that is. I'm not saying that you need to read War and Peace. Uh, even if you, you know you love reading comic books, as long as you uh, really work that, because I, I know many performers who are dyslexic, but it does add, uh, and it's and it's doable. But you know you have to know yourself as well, and that means it adds a degree of difficulty, of course, um, and, and challenge. But uh, it may mean doing a bit more homework, um, prep time to uh, compensate for that. Um, but yeah, a love of reading is the number one thing, you know, a love of, of uh, literature and of which, you know, every, every script in, um, uh, in any medium is, is part of that. So yeah, for me, reading, uh, I was a voracious reader as a child and I think that certainly helped me, uh, in this work. Right. Well, that's, that's very, that's very interesting for the, 
some fresh information, I guess, to hear. Thank you for that. And um, something I want to ask, and this this may seem a bit uh, odd to ask, but how do you for for some of the voices that you perform, how do you find the voice? almost inside you like does the voice just kind of come out do you have to sort of base it off something else but how do you find like a voice that you're going to perform well if i'm lucky enough to be given a picture i find that the uh, of the character but again that's not that's not a given um sometimes you do an audition and there uh, there, uh, there actually isn't a picture there's just a, a description descriptions often change um you may go into the room and they've changed their mind about that description so you have to take that with a grain of salt but usually the picture is the strongest guide so if i have that i usually get a pretty strong emotional hit from the picture um and most people do uh, i'm a very visual person so Whatever that first hit I got is usually the first idea I go with. And um, and then I might morph it a bit. Like, then, you know, ask myself some questions, like, how would this character laugh? Um, does it have a weird laugh and normal laugh? Um, does it have a signature? Um, um, like, and that would be in the script, right? Is there a signature, a catchphrase, or uh, is there some weird quirk that this character has? Um, or, and if it's not there... Would it would it um, would it be would it add value to give this character one? And and it doesn't always. Um, but if the lead is strongest is is the visual. Now when I'm going off with when I'm starting without a visual, then again I go back to the script and I try and um, get a lot of hints from often not the lines themselves, but what might be written about or what other people say about the character or what might be written um, <clears throat> in the description. Um, and then you take a risk, you know, and often I, I have one, when I go into an audition, I'll have a strong, you know, the one that I'm leading with and I'll have one in my back pocket, <laughs> so to speak, um, in, in case that's totally off and they're like, oh, no, 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 that's not what we're looking for. Or in case they say, that's cool, but you have something else. So that I'm prepared in that way. And sometimes when you're in the room, something else hits you. Um, and so I might choose not to use the back pocket one and bring that one to the table. Um, but it's um, it's tough, right? It's, it's just, it's a bit of a guessing game. Um and hopefully when you're in the room, you'll be given a bit of guidance. Um, but sometimes a lot of the first auditions nowadays are done by self-tape. So there is no guidance. And uh, that's made it a bit harder than when I first started. When I first started, all first auditions were done, you know, with a casting director and sometimes uh, uh, producer director also in the room. So you were given guidance. So it's harder when you're going off nothing. So what happens in this case is generally you'll do two or three different versions. You'll, you'll do the, the first one and then the back pocket one and maybe another one to give them some variety. Right. Uh, of which way the character, of how you uh, see it potentially going. Right. Does that, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. It was very, that was very insightful. Thank you. And I, I have to say, um, for my last question, because we've reached the end, would you be able to maybe demo some of the voices that you actually do in some of the uh, shows that you've uh, done voice acting roles in? Um, I could probably do a couple of, uh, some of them are in the dark recesses of my mind. No, I'm kidding. Well, you mentioned Warren. That's been, that's been a long time since I've done that, but I know Warren had a, Warren had a wish and, um, he, um, the biggest thing, of course, about Warren was the that uh, was the most iconic. <laughs> um, um, his, um, I, I also did a character called uh, Rene, who was the little French girl on uh, Jacob Tutu, another iconic um, show based on Mordecai Richelieu's book. Um, and and Renee, she talked like this. Uh, hello, this week. Um, 
in jail is referred to Jacob as Jake. Wow. Which is an easy voice for me. I, I was, I had that accent. Uh, my French is my first language, believe it or not, um, when I was younger. So what else can I do for you? Well. And then there's, there's the granny from them shops. Yes, sir. <laughs> grandma butter, grandma butternut. Mm, I quite adore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I, if, if you have any listeners who want to do it, it's, it's the greatest, in my estimation, I know it's my gig, so, but it's the greatest gift in the world uh, to be able to do this for a living. I, uh, this, you know, I, I, I gave up film and television and, and theater, and this is, doing voice work is what I do now, uh, and have for over a decade, um, and, um, and I absolutely love it. I feel uh, grateful every day for the gift of being able to do this. Well, well, thank you very much. Uh, I just have to say th- thank you for this interview. It was very insightful, and I thought it was very interesting. My pleasure, Gio.